everyone. Welcome to Chalchitra Talks. I'm Mani. And this week we have a guest on Kitab Ghar. Her name is Namita Dube and she's an actress. In addition to that, she's also an avid reader. A few weeks ago, I did an episode on Elif Shafak and I was so thrilled to see Namita post something about 40 Rules of Love, which has been written by Elif Shafak. So this week, Namita is going to recommend some of her favorite reads to all of us. Now over to Namita for her book recommendations. Hi guys, my name is Namita and today I'd be recommending a few books to you all. Uh, the only disclaimer that I want to give right at the outset is that um, reading is a very personal kind of a cerebral exercise. It directly engages with our mind. Um, but there cannot be an intellectual discourse on our feelings for a particular book because different books evoke different reactions from us. I won't be stressing particularly on plot and characters, but why the book has stayed with me or has lingered on in my mind for all these years is um, what I'm going to lay my emphasis on. So the first book that I wanted to talk about is by Chumpa Lehri. And no, it's not the namesake because I know that the film and the book both They've left an indelible mark on all of us. But I am referring to this book called Unaccustomed Earth. Now, it's a very sincere collection of short stories and um, it's divided in two parts. Part one has like five standalone stories and part two has these two characters who we follow through in de different decades of their life in three short stories. Now, they are all based on Bengali immigrants in foreign land um, and they be, they're trying to get accustomed to this uh, whole foreignness that happens to them. But what stayed with me the most was the fact that there's a lot of emotional wisdom that gets offered to us. And it's one of those books which will make you feel a little lonely and perhaps sad. But there is a certain pleasant quality to that. Like you want to sit down and maybe reflect and ruminate over life and how transient life is and the little moments that make up life, you know, the very ordinary moments that we maybe take for granted. And it's a perfect monsoon read. Short stories for me, they are not easy to engage with or I feel that sometimes they are not complete within themselves, but this is one of the most complete collection that I've ever read and uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And another author that I briefly wanted to just touch upon and mention is Anita Nair and the two books by her called Lessons in Forgetting and Eating Wasps. Now these are two books which I found deeply unsettling yet very poignant and I think she deserves a lot more uh, accolades than what she's already got although she's a phenomenal writer and people do um, there are like host of essays that I found on online on her. But I think that um, more people should read Anita Nair if you get the chance and another perfect monsoon read for all of you. So the next book that I wanted to talk about is called The Captain is Out to Lunch and the Sailors Have Taken Over the Ship. Yes, that's the name of the book and it's by Charles Bukowski. And uh, I've seen people being really enamored of his aura. Some people outrightly detest him, but uh, most of the people quote him all the time. I've seen this trend on Instagram also. There are fan pages dedicated to him. For me, I've always been a fan of his work and it's really resonated with me because I found, find this really profound kind of truth in his simple words. And so I connect with it at all levels. But this book is a very unusual kind of a bizarre book. It is a loose collection of his um, journal entries from 91 to 93, I guess, when death was literally looming over his head. So there are lots of mundane day-to-day -day activities that he covers, like going to the racetracks, or he talks about aging, fame, wealth, women, uh, everything that he's experienced. Now, this is his first-hand voice. So that's what intrigued and piqued my interest the most, because uh, he kind of leverages his writing by his dry wit and uh, wisdom. And some people find that this book is just a compilation of rants, because here's an old aging man who's about to die and uh, he's talking all these random things. But for me, this is one of the few books that I have reread at different points. And obviously, it's it's uh, it's not an easy book to stomach. But I just say that you can finish this book like cover to cover in one evening or maybe two, depending on how you like Bukowski. So the last book that I wanted to recommend is called The Course of Love. It's by Elaine D. Botton. I hope I'm not mispronouncing the name. Uh, but uh, I had the I was fortunate enough to read this book during my lockdown phase because it really helped me to uh, feel calm and 
it had a very soothing effect on me somehow so there are these two fictionalized character called uh, rabi and kirsten and we follow their love stories like roughly 13 years into their marriage so it's like um, what happens after a happily ever after it's a reflection on that so it's interwoven with a lot of philosophical insights by the author Uh, so these two run parallelly uh, the fiction account and the philosophical kind of insights of the writer it really challenged my idea of love and monogamy adultery everything gets tackled in the most beautiful kind of tender way so you don't want to be rushing through the pages of this book and be like quick it's not a quick fun read or frothy read it's something that you want to sit with and uh, maybe think on and reflect on and it gave me a lot of good thoughts to kind of just chew on so these are some of the books that i wanted to recommend but obviously there are a plethora of others and it's a never ending discussion uh, but i hope you found this insightful and you might want to reach out to some of the authors of the books that i have mentioned and this is a perfect channel to find recommendations on books music tv uh, and everything related to art and culture that's going on so please subscribe and uh, keep coming back